Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today I have got another question from a subscriber. So let's jump into the question and see what the question is. So this is the extract of the email which I have got. So it states that I want to confirm whether my input file is correct or not. There you see I have these boundary conditions. I wonder if it's necessary to define it explicitly. And if I don't define it, well, I guess assume it is to be zero. Can you please give a feedback? Okay, thank you very much. So basically, this is just a continuation of the previous email in which, in which the subscriber asked that and the subscriber is trying to perform a biaxial loading simulation and wanted to know if the boundary conditions that's, that, that's applied are correct or not. And I think this what I have understood is the subscriber is confused that if all the faces in the thickness direction or the direction normal to the loading direction should be fixed or not. So let's first look at the models one by one, which are being sent to me and see what they have done, what he has done. And then I will comment on what can be done to improve the results. So since they are the input files, so I have to import using import model. Okay. So now if I try to find out where the file is, so should be input file. So this is the first file. I hope it works fine. I think it had a UMAT subroutine or user material defined. So I have changed it to the normal material with elastic plastic properties. So if you look at the parts, it's just a single part, which seems to be, I think 3D elastic, whatever, but it's mesh, so we can't see much on that. If you go to the properties and the material properties are elastic properties, which seems very similar to steel. Then there are there's the yield strength with zero plastic strain, and then obviously it will be ideally plastic, but then there is a potential. All the values equal to one. So I will not comment on that. Again, I have videos on material modeling. If you have a question about the material model, then please comment below and I will explain it further or make another short video on that. Then I go to step, and in the step, I think it's a statistic general step. Non-linear geometric option is off. Might be the case that it's not very non-linear problem, and everything else I think has been kept as default. Then I go to interaction. We don't have any interaction, so I'm going to go directly to the loads. So now, if you go to the loads, okay, these two boundary conditions are act inactive, so there is no point seeing them because they are not used in the computation. So these are the actual boundary condition. This is the first one. So this is U2. So U2 is the vertical direction. So this is the phase where uh, displacement of 0.2 is applied in the positive y direction. This is the first loading of boundary condition. And this is u1 in negative x direction. So negative x will be this. So it's this phase here, which is on the other side of the thing. Okay. So that's fine as well. And I don't see any problem then. So this means one, two, three, and four. So these four phases are basically having a boundary condition. This is u2 again in the minus y direction. So these are the boundary conditions on the nodes and the y minus negative y direction. So bottom face is basically having this. Similarly, this one is u1 and this 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 face is basically being pulled in this direction. So now if you so this is a biaxial loading, right? So in reality, this is just a representation of biaxial loading. In reality, when your sample is very big, so you have some kind of jaws which will pull them in two direction, but they will also keep this dem this rigid body motion constrained, right? Although the 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 thick the expansion the contraction due to the pulling in both directions will be free, but still it cannot move in z direction. So we still need to, in my opinion, fix this phase. And I think this boundary condition is that. So you see these four nodes are fixed in z direction. So I think. This model is pretty correct in my opinion, and it's better to use this. And let's run it and see if it goes okay or not. So, AG1, and I call it COR1 because I presume it's correct. And so, I always go with full precision. Then I submit. It should not take long in my opinion because it's a very simple model, one element model.
so yep it's fine boundary input file conditions are fine and you see it finishes in no time so now if you go to warning there are warnings but these warnings are basically for the case that you have used an yield strength value of 300 but your loads are very high so in the first increment or whatever your load has caused the material to already yield without going first starting with the elastic property so you need to really carefully select the time increment to define the properties correctly other than that i think this is fine i don't see any problem if you go to the results then you should see contraction in this direction while expansion in x and y direction so if i press this then you see it expands in this direction while it, you have a contraction in this direction so so you see how it looks like so it only had one increment because of the time increment given to it so i think this looks fine to me in my opinion let's look at the other model which was sent to me as well by the same to check if that one is also correct or not so this is this model here and in this case if you look at the properties they should be the same most probably yep elastic properties plastic properties and the potential so that's done step should be the same yep it's the same no changes here as well okay again they have used one increment here and loads again the loads are very much the same i think it's the same model but they, you see the one of the boundary condition is missing but these are all the boundary conditions in the other directions by axial pulling direction and these two faces now are free completely free now what's going to happen although these boundary conditions are correct but in reality this one of this phase has to be fixed either this one or that one and it's just because otherwise you will have a rigid body motion and you will see some numerical singularities which will come into play so let's create a job here and i will call this as iag2 incorrect i would say what did i mean and then i'll submit i think it should not take long as well because it's very easy unless it comes across some convergence issues so if you look at the thing now so you see everything is fine it runs fine and you will see some singularities and when you see here one u two u something here then it means there were some convergence issues here so you see there were some places where you had these issues and most probably this is because of the rigid body motion so now if i look at let's say the message file then there it should be some warnings about singularity then you see here solver problems numerical singularity in degree of freedom three because this is static analysis so so you will always have infinite problems and i think if you i have a nice video on removing the sing numerical singularity issues in my channel so i will look at that as well okay so having said all this and motivating you that which could be more correct than the other and which could have more sort of convergence issues like numerical singularity in terms of these two models in my opinion the best approach for a biaxial loading would be as i'm showing you here so maybe i will just create another model here so if i say let's go to this model if there is nothing there so what i would do i'm just going to run not going to run it but i will show you the boundary condition and loadings to do so so in this case i will go with the same 3d deformable extrusion I will create, let's say, something of size. I don't know what size was it, but I'm going to go with 20 by 20 by 20. And, and then I will say extrusion. And I will also extrude it to 20. So it's like a cube. I'm not going to create any properties for the time being. It's just for demonstration because you already have seen everything. So the step. I would say again, I will go with the static general steps. So I'll go with the static general. Press this S off. I will keep everything for default as the user did. But I normally prefer it to have more outputs than just one output. So I will change it to 0.1. And this will at least write, if the total time is one, then it will at least write 10, 10 increments for me. And then I will go to the loading. And then this is the thing which I will do before that I have to go to assembly and I have to bring the part here as well otherwise I won't see it in the loading module and now if I go here I'll just go create and 
I will first create a displacement boundary condition. And what I do, similar to the UniXL case, I already have a simulation video on that. I will fix U3 in this direction. Uh, and for this phase, then I will go with this phase and I will fix it in Y direction, U2. And then I will fix this phase in, in Sorry, this, this phase should be in X direction. So I will go edit it and I will change it to X direction rather than Y direction. So then it's okay. And then the bottom one should be Y direction. It's a long day, so I'm just getting tired. Sorry about that. So now this phase and U2 should be zero. So now I think these three phases are fixed. And if you remember, for uni axial case, we will keep other two, any of the other two faces free and apply boundary condition in one of those. That's what I'm gonna do for now. So for uni axial case, I will select this one, for example, and I will apply a displacement value of, let's say, one in U2 direction, which is positive Y direction. So this becomes U, a kind of a uni axial case where these three faces are fixed. This phase has a boundary condition while these two faces are free. So you will have no lateral stresses in these two, along these two faces or on these two faces. And you will have a Poisson's effect there while well, you pull it in this direction so they will contract. For biaxial case, what I, I would do, I would create another boundary condition either on this face or this face. You can choose yours. And in, if I choose this phase, then I have to apply a boundary condition in that direction. So it will be, let's say, minus one. And what will happen now? So I will have a biaxial loading. And this phase is free and there is no rigid body motion as well. So this way you can apply a simple biaxial case. And I think this will be more correct in my opinion. Again, depending on your biaxial test setup, you this might change. The first one you, which I showed you, which was sent by the user, which I said correct, is also fine. But that that model will really struggle if the U, let's say in this case, the, the displacements in this direction and displacement in the opposite phase are not symmetric. So in that case, we were using 0.5 or 5 here and also minus 0.5 or 5 on the other direction. So you didn't have any rigid body issues. But if they are not the same and you are pulling with different forces, which normally is not the case, in that case, you might have some rigid body motion. So in any case, if you use this model or the first model, they should give you the same results. So this, I think, is, in my opinion, is the best, better approach. But first approach should also give you similar results. So again, I leave it for the subscriber if he's interested to run both models and see which one gives you better results and which one has more better convergence. So I hope this made sense and you had some learning through it. So have a good day. And if you have any problems and get back to me or comment below and don't forget to like my videos. Thank you. Bye for now.